So you probably clicked on this video because you would like to learn more about the GIS calculations. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's just get straight into it. Today we will be doing six calculations. First one being distance, straight line distance. We will then get onto area, gradient, true bearing, magnetic declination, and we'll be ending off with magnetic bearing. So as we know, there are two types of maps that you will have in your paper. You have your topographic map, which has a scale of 1 is to 50,000. You have your autophoto map, which has a scale of 1 is to 10,000. So there are two ways they could ask you for your answer. The first one could be in kilometers, and you would have to multiply it by 0 0.5 if you are working with a topographic map. However, if you are working with an autophoto map and you want your answer in kilometers, you would have to multiply by 0 0.1. Now, if you want your answer in meters, for a topographic map, you would have to multiply by 500. And for an autophoto map, you would have to multiply by 100. Now, distance is a relatively simple calculation. There's nothing too complicated at all. It's just how you read and comprehend the question. Now, our question here states, calculate the straight line distance in meters from A to B. Now, straight away, we can see that they want the answer in meters. So what does that mean? First, we identify what type of map it is, and from here, we can see it is a topographic map. So, we multiply by 500. So, in the diagram, we can see there are two points, A and B, and there's a line, right, joining the two. Now, in your map, on your autophoto map or your topographic map, you will know what type of item they're asking you to measure. It could be a runway, it could be a national road. Here, we just have two normal points, right? So, for your steps, in order to calculate your straight line distance, your first step would be to measure the map distance in centimeters. So I went through and did that and I got 4.8 centimeters, right? Next, we would have to multiply by the according scale, whether it is 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. And then we would have to, have to convert to kilometers or meters using the conversion table. The formula for distance would be your distance on your map. So let's put dm multiplied by your map scale. So obviously, since this is a topographic map, it would be 1 is to 50,000. However, they want the answer in meters, right? Read the question very carefully. So our step one would be to measure this line. And this line measured in at 4.8 centimeters. So step two would then be to take all of this information and place it into this formula here, right? So that would be 4.8 centimeters times your map scale. Now, we want the answer in meters. Therefore, we have to multiply this by 500. Remember, topographic map meters will be by 500. So then we have, for step three, we will have to write the answer with the correct unit. Remember, you have to include the unit. So this will give us 2,400 meters. Always remember to add the unit. Now, I want to show you guys, using the exact same example, how we would go about doing it if they asked for the answer in kilometers instead of this uh, meters right here, right? So, if they wanted the answer in kilometers, it will be the exact same way that you calculate it. However, you just change the scale, right? So, already we know the measurement would be 4.8 centimeters. But instead of multiplying it by 500, we multiply it by 0 0.5 since we want the answer in kilometers. Now, this will indeed give us 2.4. And what did I say? Put the unit of measurement and it will be kilometers. Now, that is the exact same way you do it for kilometers as compared to the previous example, which was done for meters. As you can see, it is pretty easy. There's no way that anyone should be getting this incorrect. Now, before we actually calculate the area of a figure, we will first have to calculate the straight line distance between the length and the breadth, right? So the question here states, calculate the area, kilometers squared, of the figure. So they're referring to this figure here, right? And on your map, you will find different types of figures. So let's say this is a farm, farmland, right? And the formula for area is length times breadth. So how do we know which is the length and which is the breadth? Just remember, the length, is all, well, the length will always be the longer side and your breadth will always be the shorter side. Therefore, we can see since this is longer, this will be your length, and this will be your breadth. So step one, in order to calculate this, you would have to calculate the length, right? So that would be five centimeters multiplied. Now let's look at what type of map this is. This is an autophoto map, right? 
and the question is asking for your answer in kilometers squared. Therefore, it will be 0 0.1 and that will give us 0 0.5 kilometers. Next, we take your breadth, right, your breadth. And that would be 4 centimeters multiplied by 0 0.1 again and that will give us 0 0.4 kilometers. We take both of these answers here and we substitute it into this formula for length and breadth. Remember, the longer one would go for length and the shorter one would go for breadth. So area equals to 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.4. And remember, when we do give the answer for area, it always has to be in kilometers squared or meters squared. It just depends on what unit you are using, right? So this would be 0 0.2 kilometers squared. Just remember to put this. This is extremely important. And there we go. We are done with calculating the area of this diagram here, this figure. Now, calculating gradient is pretty straightforward. It is only at the ending, at the last step, that catches the students off guard, right? So I'm going to be showing you how to avoid that. So in terms of calculating gradient, the question will ask you to calculate the gradient of the national road between C and D. Now, we can look at this diagram and we can see there is a massive slope here. C At point C, you will have a height of 150 meters. And at point D, you will see 170 meters. And the distance between point C and D will be measured as 5 centimeters. Now, this is a topographic map. And the formula is a quite a long one in terms of many people will see this and they won't know what means what, right? So the formula for gradient is vertical interval over horizontal equivalent. So VI over HE. VI, which is vertical interval, will actually be the difference in height. So it will be 170 minus 150. And HE is your horizontal equivalent. That will be the distance between these two points. You will have to measure that on your map. And I measure the points, the length between these two points, and it came to about 5 centimeters. So step one to calculating a gradient would be to find out what is your vertical interval. So vertical interval would be 170 meters, which is this amount here, minus 150 meters, which is this amount here. And that will give us 20 meters. The next thing would be to find your distance in meters, which, be, which would be your HE, your horizontal equivalent. And here we can take this 5 centimeters and put it in our formula for straight line distance. Remember that? So it will be 5 times 500. Now I'll tell you why I am putting 500 once we get to this answer. So this will be 2,500 meters. Now this is a topographic map, so automatically we know the scale would be 1 is to 50,000. And whenever you are calculating gradient, you have to use your meters, right? You don't need to use kilometers. Therefore, we will multiply by 500. Your third step would be to place this in your formula. So 20 over 2,500. Now this is where I said students get it all wrong. Because when you place it in your calculator, you don't place it exactly how it is. You invert the two. So what does that mean? That means when you put this answer in your calculator, you take 2,500 over 20, right? Instead of this 20 over 2,500. And that will give us 1 is to 125. Now, your answer will always be in ratio form. You don't have to put any units next to this. So the correct answer will be 1 is to 125. Now, another thing that they could ask you is what does your answer mean? Now, we got the answer of 1 is to 125. So if they ask us, what does this answer mean? How would we, what would we actually do? Now, the correct answer for that would be for every 125 meters that we walk horizontally, the land will rise by one meter. So let me write that down. So for every 125 meters that we move horizontally, the land will rise by one meter. That is how you interpret your answer. So magnetic declination is definitely the hardest calculation that you will experience when you are calculating your GIS questions, right? So what is magnetic declination? It is the angle formed between true north and magnetic north measured in degrees. So true north will be this line here and magnetic north will be 
the second line pointing towards the left direction. So obviously, if you're talking about the left direction, we are referring to the west, right? So this entire piece here with these two lines and this short paragraph will be found at the bottom of your map. So that is where you find this. And in this paragraph here, you can find a lot of important information in which you can take out the units and put into your calculations, right? You will need a lot of these numbers displayed here. So let us read this. Your mean magnetic declination, 20 degrees, 3 minutes, west of true north, July 2004. Your mean annual change is 5 minutes westwards, 2002 to 2009. So there are four steps to solve this question for magnetic declination. So the first step would be to calculate the difference in years between the current year and the date that is on the map. So the date on the map will be this year, your July 2004. And remember, each question will be different. Some questions will ask you for the magnetic declination for the current year. Other questions may ask you for, let's give an example of 2019, 2018, stuff like that. Your second step would be to multiply the number of years with the annual change. So the difference in years multiplied by the annual change. The mean annual change in this example will be five minutes westwards, right? Remember this, this uh, small inverted comma here will represent your minutes. Step three, if the mean annual change is to the west, add to the magnetic declination given. So most of our South African maps, if not all, are westwards, right? We can see here it says, your mean annual change, five minutes westwards. If you do find a map that is eastwards, you will have to do what it says in step four. It's completely different to step three. So step four, if the mean annual change is to the east, subtract from the magnetic declination given. As you can see, it is different from step three. But if you do have a South African map, it will always be westwards. So this question says, calculate the magnetic declination for 2019. So this will be our year, right? So the first thing to do is step one would be to calculate the difference in years. Now, in our information given, you can see it says 2004. So we will write down number one. The difference in years would be 2019 subtract 2004. That will give us 15 years. For number two, what we will have to do is we will take your five. See here we can see a mean annual change is five minutes westwards. So you just take the five. Remember the minutes will have the inverted comma. And we will multiply that by your 15 years, and that will give us your total change, which would be 75. Now, remember, there's no such thing as 75 minutes. You'll have to convert this into a degree and minutes. So 60 minutes will make up one hour, right? And 60, 75 minus 60 will be 15. Therefore, it will be one degree and 15 minutes. That would be the total change. And now we have to either add or subtract this towards the magnetic declination. So here we can see it is westwards. Therefore, we will have to add. So for step three, so it will be, now we can see your mean magnetic declination will be 20 degrees and three minutes. 20 degrees, three minutes, plus one degree, 15 minutes will give us the magnetic declination for 2019, this will be 21 degrees. Remember, we are adding 20 plus 1, give us 21. And 3 plus 15 will give us 18. All right, so that will be 21 degrees, 18 minutes west of true north. Remember, this your answer has to take this form MD for 2019. 21 degrees, 18 minutes west of true north. Just remember that. Now, true bearing is not difficult. It is confusing and there's a difference between the two, right? So what is true bearing? Now, true bearing is the angle measured from true north. So there are two types of true bearing that you can come across. There's type one, which will be an angle that is less than 180 degrees. Now, this is a simpler one. And type two would be an angle that is more than 180 degrees. So let us begin with type 1, and then we will come to the second type. So the question will say, give the true bearing of B from A. Now, from the question, we can get a lot of valuable information. It says from A. That means the line of true north that you'll have to draw will be from point A. Now, this is not what you will see in your map. You will just see two points, and then you will have to draw these two lines, right? So the method will be to draw a line from A to B. Right, that's how we got this line connecting point A and point B. Next, you'll have to draw a north line 
at A. So what do they mean by north line? Just draw a straight line, right? There's nothing special to it. It's just a straight line at point A because in the question they say from A. Next thing you would do is place a protractor, right? The center of the protractor will have to be at point A, right? Directly in the center of point A. And then you will have to measure the angle clockwise from this north line. I will show you exactly how to do that in the next slide. Let's just go over to type 2 and then we will show you the answer, right? So type 2 is an angle that is more than 180 degrees. Give the true bearing of A from B. Now we can see they are asking you from B, right? So from point B, no more from point A. So the method would be draw a line from B to A. Again, you are joining these two points, point A and point B. Step two would be to draw the north line at B, no more at line A, because they are asking you in the question from B. Remember here they asked you from A. Just read the question very carefully. So again, the north line is just a straight line, but instead of drawing it sort of equally on either side of the point, make it longer at the bottom, right, under this point, because again, it is a straight line. So step three, again, extend the line from B downwards because the angle is more than 180 degrees. Like if you can look at type one, it is generally equal on either side. Here from B, it is much longer at the bottom, right? Step four would be to measure the angle formed between the line extended downwards and line BA. So as we can see on this end, your right hand side, it is exactly 180 degrees. As we know, a straight line is 180 degrees. So for our answer, we will say 180 degrees plus the angle between BA and the straight line. So what does that mean? Let's get to the next slide. This is exactly what it will look like. You take your protractor and you place it at point A in type 1. Remember, we're going back to type 1. So you place your protractor exactly at the center. And if you can see carefully here, we will get 45 degrees. So you just take the 45 degrees and you place it there. That will be the correct answer for type 1. However, back again at type 2, we take this 180 degrees and we place it down by our answer. And we say plus, right? Because you are adding it to the angle between B, A. And you place your protractor at the other end, directly at B. And you measure the angle from the straight line to point A. And again, that will give us 45 degrees and a total of 225 degrees. Now, I will be doing a past paper in the next few videos. And it will become a lot easier to understand once I actually do that, right? But as you can see, it is fairly simple. Only type 2 can get a bit confusing as you have to flip the protractor over and measure from the other side, right? So you have to add 180 plus the 45 between point A and B. So for magnetic bearing, it is extremely simple and easy. All you would have to do would be to add your true bearing and magnetic declination, right? So let us give you the formula. The formula for magnetic bearing would be true bearing plus your magnetic declination. And we know from our previous question, the true bearing was 45 degrees. Sometimes you can uh, get this given below the map or on the side. They will give it to you sometimes, or sometimes you might just have to go all over again and calculate it, right? And then from our previous question, we got the answer of 21 degrees and 18 minutes as our magnetic declination. So once we add the two, we will get the answer of 66 degrees and 18 minutes. Now that would be your magnetic bearing. As you can see, extremely simple and easy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video to be useful, if you learned something from the video, give it a like and subscribe if you want more. I will be featuring a lot more videos on this channel. Remember to study hard and play harder.